If you've ever so much as installed a competitive first-person shooter, there is one question that you will never stop asking yourself. What f***ing sensitivity should I play on? From cracked high-sense kitties to OG low-sense arm-aiming Counter-Strike aficionados, this might just be the single most hopelessly unanswerable question in gaming. For some players, it's what haunts them every single time they hop into the server causing them to smash the escape key every time they lose a gunfight. So what is the so-called God Sense? You've probably heard of inhuman reactions, right? Geraint is gonna be waiting, Hiko charges in, doesn't check- oh, What? Oh my God, inhuman reactions! Well, I think it's pretty fair to say that that one in a million play never would have happened if Hiko played on a low sensitivity. And it's for that reason that I am going to explore the intricacies of sensitivity with you and why it matters. And also why whenever you talk to CSGO, Siege, Overwatch, Valorant, hell, even Fortnite players, they won't f***ing shut up about it. But in Valorant specifically, we've seen players week in and week out dominating on insanely high sensitivities in the server. And there's nothing better than watching these high sensitivity nutcases hit these nasty ass shots. But are they just doing it for the looks? Or does playing on a higher sensitivity actually give you an advantage? Going all the way back to the origins of multiplayer FPS, such as in Quake and eventually Counter-Strike, finding the right sensitivity has always been a constant battle for players. Now, your sensitivity is made up of two factors. First, there is your raw DPI, or just the DPI of your mouse. Second, there is your in-game sensitivity. DPI, or if you want to get technical, dots per inch, is a number that can be changed in your mouse settings to adjust the speed of your cursor. All right, that's a bit of an oversimplification, but don't worry, Dimitri, I got you. Dots per inch, or more accurately, counts per inch, is a representation of how many pixels your cursor will move on screen when your mouse's sensor registers one inch of physical movement. While gaming mice can tout some pretty wild DPI numbers, using a very high DPI can actually start to create noise that decreases the accuracy of your sensor. So running at 12,000 DPI may not be the best bet. Now, obviously this is gonna vary from mouse to mouse, so your mileage may vary. All right, I hope you don't mind me inserting myself into your video, Dimitri. Is Colton allowed to just insert himself into my videos like that? Into my videos like that? Into my videos like that? Nah, dude, it's fine. I mean, you're a filthy casual who uses a controller, but uh, tell me more about how my mouse works. Anyway, 400, 800, and occasionally 1600 are pretty common DPI values, but none of this really matters. Because no matter what shooter you're testing your metal in, your so-called raw DPI is always filtered through an in-game multiplier, usually actuated by a numerical value, a slider, or both. Now, once you find a good combination of raw and in-game DPI, you'll be able to calculate your effective DPI, often referred to as eDPI. For CSGO, all you have to do is multiply your raw DPI by the in-game numerical value. According to ProSettings.net, the average CSGO competitor has an eDPI of roughly 984. Now, not every game has a true one-to-one -one multiplier like CS, but for the sake of this video, we have already gone ahead and calculated all of the sensitivities you'll see to their true eDPI. Of course, pro players have traditionally gravitated towards playing on a lower sense because it allows you to be more precise with your aim, whereas raising your sense gives you an obvious speed advantage. You'll be able to clear corners much faster when entering a site. So when a pro player, or even you silver scrubs at home, are making decisions about their sensitivity, that's the trade-off they're making. Precision versus speed. But when you're first inducted into the tactical FPS genre, you should probably start with low sends and arm aiming. This is going to teach you to lock that crosshair at head height and allow your opposition to walk into it. And then it's really just as simple as clicking their heads. And for years, this low sends, long movement playstyle has been the working man's approach to aiming, even at the esports level. 
The idea being that you shouldn't really need to focus on anything outside of your 180 degree purview, since if the enemy's behind you, well, you're already dead. That said, low sends isn't always ideal. Not all FPS games are created equally. Good luck shooting a Farah out of the sky in Overwatch and then killing a Tracer blinking across the map while you're playing Widowmaker on, say, 600 EDPI. Which brings me to high sensitivity the ultimate calculated risk. As technology has gotten better and kids have gotten progressively more cracked, some very talented players have refined their ability to maintain the stability necessary to be precise in-game, while also increasing their sensitivity to hit those nasty flicks and speed their gameplay up. Even I, who a couple of weeks ago decided to copy Shroud's sensitivity for shits and gigs, which is for context, about 300 EDPI higher than my own, was able to produce some pretty nutty clips. Fun fact, I posted it to Twitter and watched as my close personal friend Get Right slid into the comments and asked me to send him my config. So I'm just gonna quietly go retire now. And while over the course of the last few years, the average sensitivity of pro players does seem to actually have gone down just a little bit, because, you know, back in the day when they started out, they didn't have f***ing desk mats, a select few players have been able to reach the top of their games while playing at a high sense. And it kind of makes sense, right? You can't be cranking 90s on low sends and expect to beat these kids. So in some games, like Fortnite or Call of Duty, you're sometimes forced to play at a higher sense. But when you're shooting the endless gadgets in Rainbow Six Siege or holding precise pixel angles, both high and low sends have their benefits. The choice is the aforementioned trade-off between precision and speed. And one of the biggest factors that goes into making that decision is the role that you play for your team. In Siege specifically, I guess you could use this argument for like both high and low sense is there's just so many angles you need to look at uh, and so many like possible pixels and positions that it could be. So I guess, you know, if you're maybe an entry fragger or someone who is just getting in the middle of these like angles, you want to have that high sensitivity to be able to look at everything really quickly. But then I could also say on the other end, you know, when you have like a lower sense, it's easier to really line up those pixels and line up, you know, all these like really like nerd angles that people could probably have from across the map. All right, now that we understand the pros and cons of both low and high sensitivity, let's talk about why we're here. If the collective average DPI of pro players has been kind of lowering over the last couple of years, then why is it that we still have these select few high sensed superstars who were just able to smurf on people? Valorant, for instance, is still very much in its infancy. Players are still solving the riddles of these new rifles. But one thing is certain, Many of the game's top pros prefer higher sensitivities than one might expect, given the historical shift towards low sends, especially in Counter-Strike. Players like Tenz, Hiko, and Asuna are all Twitch clip machines because of their nutty-ass flicks. But how is it that they're able to be so successful in a game where the gunplay most closely resembles Counter-Strike? Well, Valorant's unique agent abilities offer a verticality that was never present in Counter-Strike. In CS, with some exceptions, you can mostly expect the other team's feet to be on the ground. But in Valorant, you've got jets flying above your head or omens teleporting behind you, and you need to be on your toes at all times to be successful. The organized chaos that these abilities create is perhaps the reason we've seen former Overwatch pros like Baby Bay and Cory prove many people wrong and actually find success in this Counter-Strike inspired shooter. Overwatch features even more extreme verticality, and each hero has different sized health bars, meaning the time to kill is different for every character. But Valorant doesn't have this problem, as Baby Bay so elegantly observed. When I come to this game, it's just like, oh my god, like I'm I'm using an op and I don't have to shoot them in the head. I can just shoot them in the body once and they're dead. Like, come on, dude. You know, like I'm sitting here shooting Roadhogs like five times in the head to kill them as Widow. It's like it was so so annoying. Now, since nearly all of FaZe Clan's Valorant roster hails from Overwatch, you'd expect them all to play on a higher sensitivity. But that's not the case. 
In fact, Valorant's shining example of a high sense superstar is actually one of the former CS players who jumped ship when the game came out. 100 Thieves' star player, Asuna, plays on a whopping 1,313 EDPI. And just to give you some context, according to ProSettings.net, the average Valorant competitor plays somewhere in the arena of 1,000 EDPI. What Asuna is doing is pretty out of the ordinary. But why does he choose to play on such a high sensitivity? I mean, the pro high sense is just like you can clear a lot more things quicker. And generally speaking, I don't know how big of a difference it is, but moving your mouse, but like your physical limitation will be like short. I don't know, because like I'm thinking about like right now in my head, like if you have lower sense, it takes longer to move your mouse, right? This game will generally, I think, have average higher sense than CS because of all like the movement and stuff like Ray Satchel, Jet Dash, you need to like flick, um, Sage Walls, like all this like, you know, like verticality and stuff. But despite the benefits of playing on high sensitivity, not everybody agrees with it. It still has its limitations. It's really hard to be consistent on high sense. There's just some days where, you know, you might hit everything and it'll look super flashy because you have this like ridiculous sensitivity, but uh, this is just going to be days where you just can't hit those pixels as consistently. And then those are the days that are going to really stick out for you because, you know, you're just getting bodied by people holding angles and you can't do anything about it. Now, true enough, it can be difficult to stay consistent when even the slightest bit of hand movement can drastically change your aim. But players like Asuna have become accustomed to it after years of playing on such a high sensitivity. Even in his Counter-Strike days on Triumph, Asuna played on an equivalent sensitivity. So, like a lot of high sends converts, whether Shroud or Hiko, he's just used to it. That said, maybe there is an answer to the mystery of sensitivity. You just have to play on the highest sensitivity you can control without losing control, as opposed to, you know, going as low as you can. Look at Simple. The man is the greatest CSGO player to ever live, and he plays at a whopping 1,236 EDPI, which is only slightly lower than Asuna's and like 250 DPI higher than the average CSGO pro. Which just goes to show how intouchably insane some of these high sense players really are. They play with the precision and control that comes with needing your entire desk to move 180 degrees while having their mouse cranked up to move as fast as StarCraft players. And contrary to popular belief, you don't need to just settle on one sensitivity and never change it. Because unless you try other sensitivities, you never know what you might be missing. As long as you don't go like crazy, you know what I mean? Like just jack it up or like play super low, you, you'll most likely be fine with whatever sense you use. Um, but it is always good to experiment because like you never know. No, oh, dude, it's fine. I mean, you're a filthy casual who uses a controller, but uh, tell me more about how my mouse works. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> All right. These shoots might get awkward. Oh, these are good. I like these. Yeah, these are good. Start out with like, hey, Colton. Hey, good morning, man. Hey, Dimitri. Good morning. End with like, just fast forward 30 minutes. Like, well, fuck you, man. F wording. Fuck you, quick. Fuck you, man. Halo's a fucking dead game, all right? Well, so is Counter Strike. Fuck you. <laughs>